voila! A whole new second melding pot! Oh jeez, thanks Kagero! How do you even manage that? The melding pot has many secrets. Are you saying that I could do that too now? That we could have infinite melding pots? No, uh, only mine can do that. Well, uh, what can mine do then? Oh, it, um, it, it sings. What? I am melding talisman. Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, if you're playing through Sunbreak now, you probably have one big burning, looming question. Should I be melding talismans? Well, the short answer is yes, but the long answer is a bit more fun. So today we're going to talk all about melding talismans in Master Rank in Sunbreak. For more Sunbreak videos just like this, and also the classic pro and noob journey, make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell for the channel. Without further ado, then let's talk about the melds. While you're progressing, through the story of Sunbreak, you may be wondering if you should be doing the melding, if there is anything that you can do to help your talisman generation as you go. And well, for the most part, the answer is actually no. You don't unlock the ability to create and meld master rank level talismans until after you've reached the end of the story itself. However, there are some things that you can do along the way to make it easier once you're there. Unlike base rise, it doesn't unlock in the stages. You don't get a low power meld into a medium power into the final ranks. No, there just isn't master rank meld melding until there is, and then it's there. Once you get there, however, the process as a whole is relatively simple. You get two options, melding anima and melding reincarnation. Melding anima is your standard bread and butter melding option. Using this, you funnel master rank monster parts in, and when it is finished, you get five brand new talismans from rarity eight to 10. The reincarnation option lets you recycle any talismans that are rarity eight to 10. In exchange for 10 old talismans, you will get three new ones. The higher the rarity of a talisman, supposedly the better skills and decoration slots that it will have on it. However, I've gotten some pretty disappointing talismans still labeled as a rarity 10, so realistically when judging these talismans, you really do have to just look at the specifics of what you've gotten. Never judge a book by its cover. The reason I say this is there are, of course, even Rarity 8 and 9 talismans that could well be better than anything else you've gotten at Rarity 10, but generally speaking, the Rarity 10 ones are the ones with the absolute highest potential, the ability to give you the most skills and decoration space in total. I haven't had any god talismans drop yet myself, but I've seen quite a few that just completely fill out one skill, give some of another skill, and then have multiple sizable decoration slots on top of it, just because. As far as I can see from my meld so far, the top end of talismans is going to be absolutely ridiculous in Sunbreak, and if the chances of achieving it are anything like the best talismans in Base Rise, the vast majority of us will never actually see our dream talisman, but that doesn't mean that we can't get talismans that will completely redefine our playstyle. At the end of the day, a lot of the endgame weapons in Sunbreak are balanced quite tightly together, in a way that means the best build and even best weapon will always be a bit different for each individual person. Between all of the new niche damage skills, the balance of the weapons, and the fact that most people won't even be playing the game the exact same way as each other, the playstyles will differ, your talisman could be a defining part of your build at the end of the game. Without spoiling any of the parts that you can use to meld so you don't see the monsters you don't want to, the best way I can phrase it is the ease of melding has gone way up in Sunbreak. For a long time in Base Rise, I personally said that the talisman melding endgame felt like a way to let people just hunt whatever they wanted to and still get rewards at the end. But of course, people wanted to do it the most efficient way. They worked out the most efficient way, and then they just did that endlessly until they burned out. While in Sunbreak there absolutely will still be some sort of ultra efficient way to farm talismans, it is impossible to design a system like this without that. A lot of materials from relatively lower tier monsters are worth a lot of points in the melding system this time around. And while that doesn't quite fix the issue, it definitely does benefit the people who just want to hunt what they want to hunt. That said, there are also a couple of ways to augment your melting experience as a result of the Argosi Buddy system. Very early on in your journey through Sunbreak, you will be made aware of a system called Backroom Deals. This is long before you unlock the actual Master Rank melds. Through Backroom Deals, your Palico can procure extra items for you from the black market. When the system is first mentioned, it doesn't really give you too much detail, but the way that this works is when you go to set up your Argosy trades at the Buddy Center, you can press the button prompt on screen to give each buddy an introduction letter. Doing this makes them come back with a bunch of different bonus items highlighted in red every time you finish a quest. And two of these items that you can get are extremely important 
for melding. First and most simply is the melding pudding. This item by itself is worth 200 melding points, which is one fifth of an anima meld, and simply worth more than any other single material in the entire game. Five of these by themselves is a full melt, simple as that. The other unique item that you get from this is called the MP Accelerant, and this one sort of flips the whole system on its head. Normally when melding you fill in all the required materials, set it all up, then you go on a quest, come back and the meld is just complete. The MP Accelerant skips half of that process and finishes a meld instantly. No waiting, just rewards once you've put in the required parts. What this means is if you have MP Accelerants and you have enough monster parts, you can just sit in the hub doing meld after meld after meld until you run out of one or the other. You may be thinking, should I be saving these for some reason? And the answer is no, not really. Once you unlock the master rank melding options, there's no real reason to just sit on the MP accelerants outside of being afraid of running out of materials. If you have backroom deals constantly on, which you probably should as there's no real negative to having them, then you will wind up with a ridiculous amount of this item. Realistically, more than you can really use without farming materials on quests to keep up with it. You unlock the backroom deal system way earlier than the master rank melding as well, so make sure that you set up your backroom deals as early as possible so you have a stockpile of both of these items when you properly reach the end of the story. The gold at the end of my rainbow. Without data mining, we don't have any real specifics about the talisman's actual capabilities, but I can tell you that they do get to have four slot decoration slots along with smaller decoration slots on the same talismans. There is a maximum of two different skills on the talisman, and depending on which skills they are, they can even be fully filled out for a ton of value. My personal favorite I have so far is three recovery up, one speed sharpening, a three slot, and a one slot. It doesn't have any offensive skills, technically, but recovery up is, in my opinion, a very strong skill with the way the game works in Sunbreak. So a talisman with all of this is quite valuable. Another talisman I have that I think is quite strong in an interesting position is this one with two of the Grinder S skill. This skill is new and still needs some experimenting with particularly, but from my personal research, it is extremely strong. What it does is give you a bonus to your sharpness effects for a certain period of time after regaining a certain number of sharpness levels. At rank two, which this talisman gives by itself, it gives you a boost for 60 seconds after regaining two tiers of sharpness. For example, from blue sharpness up to purple sharpness. There are some weapons in the end game that can actually use this quite well, having a relatively small amount of purple and white sharpness, or even just going directly from purple sharpness right down to blue, making it a real quick way to activate the skill. And the skill itself seems to be around a 10% overall damage bonus over just being at purple sharpness normally, which is sort of insane when you think about it. That is a lot of damage bonus from one skill. There is no decoration for this skill, and the armor pieces that it is on are not very good in general, so realistically you'll be sacrificing a lot if you want to build around it, unless you have it on a talisman like this. When I said earlier that each person's talismans will change their best weapons and best builds as a whole, this is the type of thing that I'm referring to. A build without this skill functions incredibly differently to a build with it, and there are a number of new skills in Sunbreak that you can get on talismans that have the same kind of effect. Generally speaking, when it comes to melding efficiently, you want to use the anima meld system 10 times to create 50 talismans, and then use the reincarnation meld 5 times to turn those 50 talismans into 15 talismans. The exception, of course, is when you get a talisman worth keeping from the anima system, you don't want to spend that, and new to Sunbreak, you actually have the ability to lock a talisman that you want to keep. This keeps it from being able to be selected for reincarnation melding, and just makes the process significantly more convenient, as when you go into reincarnation melding, you can now just select every single talisman down the list that you don't already have locked. The main reason that we want to use reincarnation melding is, if it's anything like base rise, which we can assume that it will be, the pool of talismans you can get from the reincarnation melds will be higher tier than the ones that you get from the anima melds. And so realistically, the anima melds exist to fuel your reincarnation melds outside of a particularly lucky drop every once in a while. Circle of life. At the end of the day, the melding system doesn't have a massive amount of depth to it in Sunbreak, but now you hopefully understand it as well as you can without me literally going down the list of monster parts and showing you how much they're worth while spoiling some of the new creatures along the way. Essentially, the big tips here are to start your backroom deals with the Argosi as early as possible, and then don't be afraid to use your melding pudding and MP accelerants once you properly unlock the Master Rank Talisman melding options. They are tools to be used, not secret powerful items in an RPG made to be stocked away and then forgotten. The melding cycle 
and Sunbreak is friendlier than it was in Base Rise. It allows you to meld from lower tier monster materials for a similar value as the higher tier monsters, but at the same time, the addition of MP accelerants make the system more demanding, as you can very easily start to spend more parts than you generate. Realistically, the way that I would say that you should treat this, unless you're trying to achieve absolute hyper efficiency, is just play the game. Hunt what you want, and then use the parts from what you hunt to fill up your melding pot. If you find you have a surplus of monster parts, burn through a bunch of MP accelerants, and then start building up parts again. I understand that everyone wants to get the most out of their time while playing the game, but maybe you should focus on how to get the most fun out of your time instead of the most talismans. Have the fun, and the talismans will follow regardless. I mean, that's my opinion on the matter, at least, from one hunter to another. Overall, there isn't a massive amount to say about the melding system in Master Rank, so honestly, just get out there, rack up those monster materials however you want to at whatever speed is right for you, and then turn them into goodies. I wish you all the best of luck in opening up your melding box to find the talisman of your dreams. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye